Hello and welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. For this video, uh, we're going to introduce blood. We're going to talk about what blood is. Blood is a connective tissue You may remember the four primary tissue types, connective tissue, muscle tissue, nervous tissue, and epithelial tissue. Um, this is one of the connective tissues. It's the only liquid tissue in the body. Um, and it's kind of interesting that it's a connective tissue. It really shows you how diverse the connective tissues are when within the same category we have the only liquid connective tissue in the body and the closest thing to absolute solid that we have in the body, bone tissue. So it's a connective tissue. Um, it's a liquid, as I said. And what's inside of blood, there are, um, I guess, two really broad major components. One is plasma. And that is the truly liquid part of it. That's what the other stuff floats around in, is the plasma. Plasma has a lot of stuff in it, and we'll get to that. Um, the other thing that's in blood are, are what we call the formed elements. Formed elements are like the cells in blood. There's three formed elements. Um, two of them are actually called cells, red blood cells, white blood cells, and then the third one is platelets. Only one of them is a true cell, by the way, um, the white blood cell. Those are true cells because they have a nucleus and they're capable of cellular reproduction. At least the majority of them are. Um, and because they have a nucleus, they can replace their parts and things like that. The red blood cell is also, of course, called a cell, but it's not a true cell, at least not a true living cell, because it lacks a nucleus and therefore is not capable of reproduction and it's not capable of replacing its own parts. And the last one, of course, platelets. And now I'm going to do a brief compare and contrast between, the, between these three formed elements of blood. Um, in terms of their jobs, the white blood cell's job is body defense. There are different white blood cells. Some of them are involved with true immunity. These are the lymphocytes. Um, some of them are highly phagocytic. They, um, engulf and destroy aliens and other broken down cell parts and things like that include things like macrophages and neutrophils um, and then others are involved with um, defending us from helminths and um, other organisms that can we don't call them infections we call them infestations when we have them um, worms and other parasites um, so there's different types of white blood cells, but overall the job is body defense. Red blood cells, one huge major job, and that is um, carrying around oxygen, transporting oxygen. Red blood cells actually appear red because they're filled with a molecule called hemoglobin. Hemoglobin molecules can carry four oxygen molecules um, per hemoglobin. So carrying oxygen around is the major job. Um, platelets. Platelets are these tiny little things. Um, they're smaller than cells. They're kind of barely visible under a microscope. And their job is called hemostasis, which means stopping bleeding or preventing bleeding. Um, they're involved with initiating clotting as well. Um, but Hemostasis is more than just clotting, it's stopping bleeding, and it includes the formation of a platelet plug, uh, the stimulus of smooth muscle contraction, which causes a bleeding blood vessel to constrict so less blood is lost, and lastly, the initiation of the clotting cascade, which is, involves the proteins, that, um, especially fibrin, that really form a tight molecular meshwork that stops the bleeding. So stopping bleeding, or hemostasis, that's the job of the platelets. In terms of size, um, white blood cells are the largest, platelets are the smallest, and red blood cells fall in between. In terms of cell shape, um, white blood cells, at least in the bloodstream, tend to be rounded. Um, red blood cells have a very indicative shape. Um, 
It's called biconcave. If you look at a red blood cell when it's kind of flat, you'll see it's kind of round, and then you'll see this either lighter area in the middle or some dimpling towards the middle. If we were able to turn this sideways, you would see this kind of shape in cross section. It's concave on both sides. So red blood cells are concave, biconcave in shape. And platelets, in terms of how they appear in their shape, when they're not activated, they're the, just these little kind of rounded pieces of cells. Um, where do they come from? All of the formed elements of blood have their ultimate birthplace in myeloid tissue. We find myeloid tissue in red bone marrow. It's red bone marrow. In the adult, in the embryo, um, myeloid tissue is found in um, the spleen and the yolk sac initially. So that's where they come from. Some of the white blood cells, by the way, um, again, ultimately they were born in myeloid tissue, but some of those cells seeded the thymus and some other lymphatic tissues, and there the cells can divide. Um, so down the road, they can come from other tissues, such as the thymus and other lymphoid tissue. Red blood cells are always made in myeloid tissue, all of them. So inside of the adult, um, red blood cells come from red bone marrow. It's why red bone marrow looks kind of red. And red bone marrow is found in the ends of long bones and um, sandwiched in the center of flat bones, such as the sternum and the skull plates. Platelets also come from red bone marrow. Um, these guys have an interesting birth. Um, they're made by cells called megakaryocytes. Megakaryocytes inside of red bone marrow um, are these really large cells, and those really large cells send these tendrils into the capillaries inside of the red bone marrow, and those tendrils um, fill with the substance that's needed to have a functioning platelet, and then they start pinching off into these little pieces that are the platelets. Another thing to know about all three of these formed elements, um, I said they all come basically from myeloid tissue or red bone marrow. They come from actually the same type of stem cell called a myeloid stem cell or um, a hemocytoblast. That stem cell is multipotent. Um, it starts to divide and it can give rise again to any of these three formed elements. In terms of concentration in the blood, this is another thing we could discuss as being different between all of these guys. Uh, red blood cells are the most concentrated. There are more red blood cells in blood um, than the other formed elements in terms of concentration. And then second would be platelets. There are more platelets than there are white blood cells and fewer platelets than there are red blood cells. And then lastly, white blood cells. There's a lower concentration of white blood cells. We actually find more white blood cells out in the lymphatic tissue, in the um, lymph nodes, in the spleen, in the uh, thymus, for example, than we find in blood. So those are the formed elements. Let's go back to plasma for a minute and talk about it. Plasma again is the, sorry, plasma is the liquid part of blood and of course the formed elements are floating in the plasma, but also we have plasma proteins. One of the major plasma proteins I will talk about is albumin. Albumin is a very important plasma protein for maintaining proper osmotic pressure. You might remember learning about osmosis and discussing things like hypertonic, isotonic, and hypotonic solutions. Um, albumin gives blood its tonicity and um, blood has an osmotic pressure of around 300 milliosmol. If it did not have that relatively higher osmotic pressure compared to the rest of the body fluids, um, it would not maintain blood volume. So the albumin is important in the bloodstream to make sure the blood pulls in enough water to maintain um, blood volume. If there's not enough albumin in the bloodstream, then Water can leave the bloodstream and it tends to accumulate in other tissues of the body, um, especially in the abdomen. This is called ascites. And to give you an example of a disorder, uh, a person who has a liver problem where their liver is failing, the liver is what actually makes the albumin. 
So if their liver is failing, their liver won't make enough albumin and their belly will swell as a result. They will get a third spacing of fluid, a movement of fluid from the bloodstream out to the abdomen and it'll fill up the abdomen a bit and cause them to have a large belly. You can also have that if there's protein deficiency in a person's diet. Other proteins, um, antibodies. We find antibodies in blood plasma. Of course, they're uh, for body defense. The antibodies bind to aliens and ultimately cause the, the destruction of those aliens. Um, antibodies, by the way, are the only plasma protein that's not made by the liver. So this gives you an idea of how hugely important the liver is to good, happy, healthy, functioning blood. Um, the clotting proteins. Oops, not glotting proteins, clotting proteins. Clotting proteins are important for hemostasis, which we already discussed a bit. But clotting proteins, of course, involve proteins that um, help to trigger the activation of plasma, uh, of not plasma, sorry, help to activate the, um, the fibrin. Fibrin exists floating around in our blood as fibrinogen. That's the inactive version. And once it's activated, the fibrin molecules link together with each other to form a blood clot. And the clotting proteins are important for that, of course. Um, clotting proteins include fibrin, by the way, or fibrinogen. But then also they include multiple factors involved with ultimately the activation of um, fibrin. So that's a few of the, of the proteins in blood. Those aren't the only ones. And then we could talk about other stuff that, of course, exists in blood, like dissolved oxygen and dissolved CO2, um, any of the nutrients that we could talk about, because those nutrients are absorbed um, into the blood uh, in the digestive tract. When you eat something, that gets absorbed into the bloodstream and then travels in the body. The nutrients from that food travels in the body through the bloodstream. From this, we could kind of talk about the major function of blood or why we have blood in the first place. It's a transport medium. Blood transports the oxygen that the cells need. It also transports the other nutrients that the cells need, including the dietary nutrients that we absorb. Um, and blood takes away the waste products from the cells, the waste products produced by the cells, including um, carbon dioxide and other um, metabolic wastes that the cells produce. So blood's very important for not only bringing the things that the cells need to stay alive, the oxygen, the nutrients, but also for taking away the waste products that would cause the cells problems if they built up too much. So blood is a transport medium. And I've talked about the major components that we find in blood. Um, I think that's enough for an introduction to blood and what blood is. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments section down, down below. And thank you for watching.